So I'm with Philip looking at his design work and inspirations. And this is my my studio, which is my summer studio, and this is my drawing board. And here you can see a, a design I'm working on based on this 19th century English chintz. And this is for my Snow Leopard Secret Stream collection. And you can see it's all these trailing um, variegated poppies, which are done in quite a blocky style, because I'm uh, inspired by this block print. And then it's got butterflies and bees and things buzzing around between them. So that's my current design. So how old is that piece of fabric? That's uh, printed in about 1850. Would that have been curtain fabric? It would have been cur fabric? curtain fabric. It was printed by a company called Stead McAlpin. Up in, they're up in Carlisle. They're still printing at the moment. They used to print my furnishing fabrics as well. That's lovely. These documents are invaluable as as sources of inspiration. Then up there, I've got my sort of rough layout of a design, which I pin pinned up, and that sort of helps me to see how it's going to work. So, did you photocopy? I photocopy it? that. And then the butterflies, do they come out of a the another photocopy? Yeah, the butterflies I got out of another book. You can see down there. Uh, it's actually the country diary of an Edwardian I lady. I thought I recognised that. Yeah. The country diaries first inspired me when it came out in 1978 and now exactly 40 years later it's helping me again so thank you very much country diary of an Edwardian lady Edith Holden. Well, it was about then that Lady So-and-so first started up. Was it? And we sold the Country Diary Edwardian Lady fabric oh, yes. on our market stalls. That's we, nice. we started off with market stalls That's in Henley on Thames. How lovely. And Marlow, where we've still got a shop, and Beaconsfield. That's nice because Dorma did a lot of the Country Diary um, bedding and curtains and stuff. Yep, so 40 years on, the Country Diary is once more helping inspire me. And then I've got more ideas for this Snow Leopard Design Secret Stream collection. And you can see how I gradually sort of, I get the initial inspiration, which is these two Japanese block prints. They're sort of from about 1900. And then I arrange things differently. And there I want to have a stripe behind it, so that will work as a stripe. Then hanging up here, I've got some of my designs from my Snow Leopard Arcadia collection, which is the current Snow Leopard collection, which is just shipping to stores this week. And there's Carp and Petals, and there's Violas, and there's the um, Farmyard Feathers. So they should be in stores round about now. Yes, but we've got them and they're selling very quickly. So if you want to get some, order it quickly. Yeah, around the world, this is selling selling out quickly. And it's even pre-orders are selling out before it's, it's they've arrived in the shop. So you need to get your, your Snow Leopard Arcadia Pronto. And these are the cards which are made up by Free Spirit, which, um, show the different designs in the collection. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a very nice way. There's a quilt. So it's oh, I love that quilt. Yeah. So, where do we get that um, um, from? I'd imagine you get that from Free it's Spirit. Free Spirit. I think that would be from Free Spirit. There's another one there which is very small, which is really beautiful. You can hardly see it with the feathers and the eggshells and the fish. That one's lovely because it's got the ammonite fabric as well and the fish. It, and it shows that those fish are yeah. beautifully. Yeah, it says www.freespiritfabrics.com. So I think that will be available, should be available from the website. And here it is in the more of a sepia colourway, which I really like, which was the colourway based on the on my original artwork for the feathers. So that's Arcadia coming along. 
and this actual space is my summer studio and it gets it's quite a limited space but down there I don't know if you can see it there's the sea so most days I walk down and have a walk on the beach and pick up um, different things that inspire me like ammonite. Can I show everyone the yeah, there's dinosaur. dinosaur bones? Yeah, there's a few of my many thousands of dinosaur bones that I've dug up and then there's some of my Japanese prints above the fireplace and some of my Tibetan statues which I've collected over the years and down here is an old wallpaper book from 1925 which I've just recently acquired and this has the most beautiful designs there for example is a, a wisteria design and that one's an all over chrysanthemum design and that's a beautiful all over lilac design and then a, there is a great design and this is going to form the inspiration for a, a another snow leopard collection which I'm planning to paint up next year. So it's just amazing how you get inspiration from so many different sources. Once you start having inspiration then inspiration comes from everywhere. And I'm only going to show you this for one second. There's some of my KFC designs which will be coming in the spring. That's the KFC Autumn 2018. So you're not meant to see those. At, at Lady So and So we're going to be stocking every single one of those. Yeah, good. Without a doubt. I should hope, them. So, hope so too. <laughs> I've just spotted something else yeah. over here which fascinates me. Can you tell us more about these? Oh, yeah. I bought these on eBay. These are old early 19th century um, hexagons blocks which uh, I just bought them because they date from the early 19th century and I bought them just I was interested in the designs on the early 19th century fabric and in collections I'm always looking for small textures to work in the background and seeing these I just thought those will make such good designs to work with the larger florals so your designs don't normally go as small as they don't that, normally do they? but sometimes you, you need small designs to work with the large ones or even to have as a background to the large so ones do you think you're going to be going smaller I'm not going smaller I'll still carry on doing huge florals but I they will always kick in the snow leopard collections be smaller designs that work with the large ones so looking at those designs I would say they date from about 1820 so you sort of think of everything that was going on in the world in 1820 then that that was what was it's being. amazing yeah so carrying on in my workspace on the floor you have lovely old antique Caucasian rugs I feel terrible to be treading That's on it. That's all right. It's what they're designed for. All art is designed to be used. On the wall behind me, behind my working space, these are antique Japanese paintings. These ones are by, that one's by Hiroshigi. He's one of the greatest 19th century woodblock masters. And that's an original painting by him. And that's a painting by his pupil, Shiginobu. And here's a drawing attributed to Hokusai and that's a painting by Kuniyoshi. So I find having the work of the great masters around me, original works, very inspiring. And there's also more piles of... An are, they, are these yours or antiques? These are antiques. So here's another potential runner-up for my um, 1930s collection which I might develop which is delphinium because I did a delphinium design for the KFC which was very popular a few years back and that's very much in the 1930s style and carrying on down this way there's more um, Caucasian rugs 19th century 
and more dinosaur. More dinosaurs. These are all dinosaur bones. Mostly they have marine reptiles, pliosaurs and plesiosaurs. That's a bit of a femur down there. And here, these are all sections of the jaw and a skull of a pliosaur. So the pliosaur is the biggest marine predator ever. And a pliosaur could gobble up a Tyrannosaurus rex. Had was a Tyrannosaurus rex to get in the sea. And this is part of its jaw. And there you can see the stubs of the teeth wow. coming out, out of its jaw. So that would have been huge, great big teeth coming out of there. So all of this is sections of the jaw of the pliosaur. And up here, you've got more original paintings by Hiroshigi. And that's how, how old are the, these? What was these, the era? These were painted in about 1850. The Hiroshigi and Hokusai were the two greatest landscape painters um, in Japan in the 19th century. They're very, very famous. These are pictures of actors, paintings. These are paintings rather than prints by Hiroshigi. And these are woodblock prints. Kunisada, Kunitsuna, Utamaro, and Hokusai. And there's another painting here by Hiroshigi's pupil. Then, if you come outside, and this is my little little bit of garden by my summer studio. And that's balsam plants growing. The recent storms have rather shredded them. And you come along here, there's some epium plants I'm growing for next summer. And they grow huge, they grow to about 12 foot high with huge blue flower spikes. And along here, is old stuff I picked up down in the plough fields down below when this was a, um, a training range for people before D-Day in the 1940s. So these are all bits of ordnance, bits of mortars and 50 calibre shells and things. It's all very interesting to sort of tell the story about our past. And here are some of the this is amazing. Fossilised ammonites. And all of these I've collected in the last year uh, locally. And these are the spiral shells which I also turned into fabric. And these are about 170 million years old. And these were once happily swimming along at the bottom of the Jurassic Sea. And these are quite these are quite deep. Deep they're, sea. They're extinct now. They're long since they're extinct. <coughs> They became extinct when the dinosaurs died out, um, what was it, 65 million years ago. And these ones that... These ones, they've got fossilised sea urchins there, known as echinoids, and you can find them in any ploughed field where there's flint. They're about 100 million years old. And then there's bigger ammonites behind them, which are from the Kimmeridge clay. So they're about 145 million years old. And are you going to do a sea urchin fabric range? I've got, a sea, so. I've got a sea urchin fabric uh, special tip bit for you coming out next year, next spring with the K-Facet Collective. There's a sea urchin fabric, which I'm very proud of. And I think it's the masterpiece for my next year's collection. The epic masterpiece. It's the epic masterpiece for next year is the sea urchins. That's something to look forward to at Lady So and So. Thank you very much. Thank you.